Welcome to the Terrible Podcast with your host from SteelersDepot.com, where you can find all your latest and greatest Steelers news. It's Dave Bryan and Alex Kazora, always lit, talking Steelers. And now, here's Dave and Alex. Welcome to the Terrible Podcast, a special edition of the Terrible Podcast, Pittsburgh Steelers Training Camp 2023. It is Friday night, July 28th. The Pittsburgh Steelers had their second practice at St. Vincent College in Latrobe uh, earlier in the day. And back from that uh, is obviously one Alex Kazora. Alex, how hot is it? Happy Friday. <laughs> Pretty hot out there. I would say Pittsburgh was battling themselves and battling the heat, and the heat won multiple times today. But that's life of camp, and Mike Tomlin seems to love it, embrace it, and get you ready for the uh, the long season ahead. Yeah, he sure seemed to like it. Uh, it was a very short press conference after the uh, practice, and I think only like two or three questions really. And I think even his monologue was was a little longer, the longest part of it, where he was talking about the heat and you know how, getting to learn pl- uh, what players can do do to adjust to it and all like that. Uh, before we get rolling on this, though, you want to shout out uh, good buddy Lynn Testa and the fine folks at Touring Plans. Absolutely. Yeah. Touring plans, Len Testa, been a longtime sponsor of the training camp coverage that continues for 2023. So very happy and thankful to call them a friend of the site. And their sponsorship has been invaluable back when we were just kind of, it was like me, you and Matthew Marksy trying to make training camp work and the site's grown, but uh, touring plans has stayed with us. So we thank them. If you're planning a trip to Disney, touring plans helps you with your itinerary where to go, what to do, how to navigate it all. It can be a chaotic time. You're going with your family. You want to make the most of that experience, I'm sure. Uh, contact Touring Plans, and they can give you the best path, the best route to your Disney experience. So go to touringplans.com, and we thank them again for their partnership with our training camp coverage. Uh, absolutely, we do. Uh, shout out to Lynn Testa. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Alex, uh, I guess we'll start with the housekeeping today. And uh uh, another heat related day, if you will. Uh, I think Rodney Williams, who, who uh, maybe missed some time yesterday, uh, was back on the field. And Mike Tomlin said that Deontay Johnson, Connor Hayward, and I think DeMarvin Leal missed parts of some sessions today. Uh, Deontay Johnson, obviously, uh, earlier in practice, had to take the cart inside. Uh, but it doesn't sound like anything serious overall with any of those players, probably just the whole hydration thing and getting, getting acclimated to the heat and humidity and the rigors of camp and all that stuff. Uh, is that what you saw? That seems to be the case. We'll see what tomorrow brings, you know, with Deontay on the cart, that that is pretty typical for a lot of these guys who have some sort of injury or issue, because if you have to walk back, it's a long walk up the stairs or up the hill on a hot day like this. Why make a guy have to walk that far? Just uh, let him take the card up and get up uh, inside uh, and get some uh, shade and whatever else he needs a little bit quicker. But, you know, Austin, or excuse me, Johnson initially sat on the water cooler. He was unattended. I think a trainer put a towel over him. So it's not like they were really examining anything too closely. So if there's an injury, maybe it's a cramp or something relatively uh, mild. Same with Connor Hayward. Alfonso Graham, I think, had a, a cramp at the end of practice as well. And uh, we'll see if those guys get back out there tomorrow. How does it? Is it noticeably hotter or humid this, this time of year up there or no? Uh, or is it kind of par for the course? Uh, it, it's always pretty hot in Latrobe and pretty humid. Um, so I, mean, I would say, though, this is one of the hotter days. It got up in the lower 90s today, and uh, that, that's pretty much as hot as it's going to get. So and that sun beating down on you early in camp as well as guys kind of get acclimated to it all. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty tough environment to work in. All right. Uh, where would you like to start? Let's start on the offensive side of football. Start with uh, the quarterback position. Yeah, in terms of individual play, there's nothing too notable for me to note. I thought the quarterbacks were just fine today. What I'm kind of noticing overall, and it's not a brand new thing, it's really more of a continuation since Matt Canada became OC and really even more so last year in the post-Ben era, but all these sprint outs and boots and rollouts and play action and a little bit of RPOs as well. I know there was at least one RPO on the first day. I don't know if there was one today. There might have been something that I, I just couldn't get a good good look at, good read on. But 
certainly um, all these quarterbacks can move to some extent. Kenny Pickett, a good athlete. Mitch Trubisky, a good athlete. Mason Rudolph with a hint of mobility. Tanner Morgan as well, though he's not uh, getting any sort of team reps. But um, utilizing that, getting these quarterbacks on the move, a very common theme of uh, practice the first two days. All right, uh, accuracy with Pickett. Uh, I, I did get the chance to see uh, on the social media that that uh, the big play of the day. I, for, I don't know what was it, forty-one, forty-three uh, mm-hmm. to uh, to Calvin Austin. I think down the uh, left-hand side. Uh, what did you see on that? Yeah, I don't know the exact uh, whole play. I mean, it was Cole Holcomb trying to run with Calvin Austin downfield. So I don't know if it was one of those uh, jet sweeps or you know fake the jet motion, and then the receiver goes flat and then runs runs long. If the play continues to extend, I don't I don't entirely know the uh, the entire scheme of the play. The ball was maybe a little underthrown by Kenny Pickett Austin having to come up and and kind of wait for it, but not significantly so. And Holcomb still couldn't impact the play. So that was the biggest play of the day. Uh, Austin getting behind Holcomb for what I had down as a 41 yard gain. So good for Austin to uh, have a positive note there after a tough day on Thursday. Was the most uh, exciting thing about that play, uh, you know, him, him obviously rebounding and making the catch and then, you know, pick it, uh, dropping it in the bucket. I mean, because obviously yeah. he's going against the line. You just expect him to win that right. mad- matchup, right? Yeah, and it wasn't like it was a terribly difficult catch. I'm not trying to discredit Austin. Good to have that play and have a you know big time you know double chunk type of play. That's what he was drafted to do. So so good on him for that. Uh, it's just exciting to see a big play um, in a, in a full session like that. That's uh, you know got a little football feel to it. So need more of those for sure in 2023. Uh, all right. I, uh... Anything in particular stick out about Trubisky or, or, or Rudolph before we move on? No, not overall. Um, they were both, you know, just solid today. N- nothing terrible, nothing amazing to talk about with either either of those guys. All right, running backs, what you got? Yeah, again, still tough to evaluate right now. Um, saw a bit more Alfonso Graham, a bit more Darius Hagens today, getting a couple of carries uh, there late. But McFarland still running kind of that third team and pony again. I mean, I got to have to count the number of pony snaps. I know we, it's fun for us to, to laugh about and we'll see if they ever want to use it, uh, you know, when the games start to matter. That's not been their trend over the last several years, but a ton with that. And that gets McFarland a lot of snaps because generally speaking, he's kind of the, you know, when they're pony, you got the, your your normal traditional deep back and then usually um, a, a running back in the slot, and that's often McFarland jetting across or you know running a, a short route or something like that. So uh, McFarland, you know, continues to benefit from playtime being that third string running back in itself, but also getting those kind of pony slot looks that allow him to get those extra reps. And look, this isn't new to him, right? I mean, it feels no, like it feels like he's been around now for like six years. Uh, but, uh, you know, obviously, uh, uh, none of this is new to him at this point. Yeah. And I mean, a couple of years ago, I think it was, uh, two years ago. I mean, they were doing a ton of pony stuff with him. Then he had the MCL injury right before the season started or late in camp or whatever it was. And and he was shelled for the first six weeks. So, um, hopefully he can stay healthy and, you know, I'm not saying that Farland will be used as that guy, but as we talked about yesterday, we saw Jalen Warren, saw Najee Harris, a little bit of pony work last year. I think they want to find ways to try to get both these guys on the field occasionally, and hopefully it gets implemented. Uh, Hagens, I mean, uh, you know, it's it's way it's it's hard. You know, they don't have pads on or anything, but ha- uh, is he noticeable at all? I mean, he probably you know, ha- what kind of reps is he getting? What three or four, maybe? Yeah, I don't know exactly how many reps. I know he had at least one carry the final play a team today. I don't know if he had. I can try to check my notes if he had anything more than that. Um, I have him down for one carry at that last play and at least one rep uh, earlier in team. So he's kind of getting that that last rep or two. Uh, so chances are slim right now. But, um, you know, somebody goes down. Injuries have happened. That happened last year with the Pittsburgh Steelers running back position. So we'll see. But he looks good overall. All right, now, uh, real, real quick, back back us up here and, and, and kind of set this. Uh, about how many total offensive plays uh, do you get to see between seven shots, uh, you know, team and, you know, any, any, any like seven on seven stuff? Uh, just going off a team, the 11 on 11 today was 43 snaps, actually 44 because they had an eighth in the seven shots. Seven shots lied. It was eight shots today mm. because Tomlin wanted to reset something for a low snap penalty. So 44 today. I don't uh, include seven on seven in that. I don't chart the seven on seven play by play. Okay, That's probably roughly 15 or so snaps. So in terms of that action, we're, we're getting up closer to probably 60 snaps, but 
Um, again, a little bit shorter practices today and yesterday when the Pats come on, they'll go a little bit longer. Um, but in team sessions, besides seven shots, when they're in their 11 v 11, it's almost always 12 plays. And so you go four, 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 basically first team gets four reps, second team, four reps, third team, four reps. Of course, guys rotate in, but that's the general structure of a training camp practice. Okay. All right. Uh, 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 so I, I think that's one of the things that, you know, I, I even need refreshing on every year and it kind of sets the stage. We probably should have done that yesterday, but uh, uh, that'll give people an idea of kind of play totals and kind of the, the, the mm-hmm. how, how, how practice progresses and all. Uh, one note, uh, not with a running back in particular, but adjacent, uh, Monty Potterbaum, your guy. Interesting uh, note there. Did get at least one rep in team today. He was uh, kind of a wing Y off that pulled across on split flow action. But during the individual sessions, I believe yesterday he was with the running backs. Today, he was with the tight ends when they were doing run blocking. He was doing uh, stuff with the tight ends and offensive tackles, and he was on the blocking sled with the other tight ends. And he really didn't work with the running backs as they went through their you know, catching and uh, ball security drills and those kinds of things. So obviously because he's kind of a true fullback, I mean, he's getting, you know, used in, in the blocking side of things. So um, he's kind of almost, you know, getting more time with the tight ends than he is with the running backs. Yeah. We're probably going to, the most action he's probably going to see throughout the preseason is going to be on special teams, mm-hmm. isn't it? Oh yeah. I think that's going to be his calling card to try to stick and stay on this roster in any capacity, practice squad or otherwise. But uh, it, it is interesting because Derek Watt was always with the actual running backs and uh, he was the true fullback last year. And now Potterbaum, at least yesterday, or at least today, I should say, um, was getting work with the tight ends. I think uh, go, you know, good news is I think a year ago at this time, we were talking about Najee Harris and his foot, right? Yeah, he got hurt on the first day in pad. So okay. not to be pedantic, oh. but I think it was slightly uh, after this. Okay. But yeah, but pretty close. All right. Uh, what you got as far as the wide receivers? Obviously, with Deontay uh, leaving, um, a lot more work for Calvin Austin, right? Yeah, a lot of reps for him, a lot of first team opportunities, and had that big play. I think that was his only catch of the day, but nothing negative to say about Calvin Austin that I could see. So that's positive. Allen Robinson has been as advertised, middle of the field, diving catches, underneath guy. He got free. I think there was either a miscommunication, he got wide open somehow or another for a big play downfield early in team session. So Robinson just kind of being what he needs to be tough catches over the middle underneath type stuff, occasionally getting open downfield. Um, that's been solved. Gunnar Olszewski, a couple of good ki- practices, probably no one talking about him too much. I'm not going to uh, say it's been unbelievably good, but he's caught the ball every time it's been thrown his way. Uh, showed good body control. I mean, he's had a, a, a good start to camp. He's a try hard guy. Yep. Yeah. A hundred percent. And you know, some slot reps for him and, yeah, I mean, he, you know, traditionally not a lot of receiving experience being what a defensive back in college, but uh, second year in the system for Pittsburgh probably brings him some comfort, not his first lap around the track, as Tomlin would say. So he's done fine. I mean, some of those blocking uh, opportunities last season, he had no business being part of, but he, <laughs> he was given, I remember, I remember a few of them, he was given the, the, the effort on those, you know, didn't uh, you know, didn't win all of them, but, but he, he did win a couple of them that I think we talked about uh, uh, that were notable there. Uh, Robinson, he, he really gives great interviews. You can see why they, they mm-hmm. brought him in, you know, uh, uh, quintessential uh, type type of leader there. Uh, I- anything out of uh, guys like Butler? Or, uh, there was uh, who 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 was uh, the other wide receiver that did did something in the uh, seven shots? I think uh, Radley or Fitzpatrick. I think this Fitzpatrick, yeah, Fitzpatrick caught a Patrick. touchdown at the end. Uh, yeah, had a little slant that looked like uh, that caught it in front of Elijah Riley. Yeah, Hakeem Butler had a catch today. He was getting. He's kind of lined up different places a lot of outside receiver uh, i know we kind of thought of him as a big slot i'm sure he'll get some work they're all kind of you know pay more attention to that and note that but i saw him on the outside as well so been pretty quiet for him but today was better than yesterday let me ask you could cody white be a threat to someone like miles boykin he's got a special teams background and he has done some of those things before but i don't think at the level of what boykin has done i really see you know cody white is like that for a baseball player, the guy that's between majors and triple A and like that's practice squad lifer in the NFL, which is a little less of a thing than. It oh, he's to be. a Drew Maggi then. Uh. <laughs> he is the Drew. Oh, I like that. That's a good call. Sadly, Drew Maggi released Cody White. Does yeah, not want to become, uh, Drew Maggi, but he kind of reminds me of like the old Walter Young or the offensive version of Scott Pax. Oh, and the guy God, that just kind of hangs around practice squad. God, you send me back uh, uh, every year the Walter the Walter Young conversation, right? Right, 
Right. So it's kind of like, I, I think he's a good bet for the practice squad, uh, trying to really threaten for the 53. I think there'd have to be an injury, uh, but he had a good day yesterday. And I mean, he's versatile. They like him. Uh, his, you know, I don't know. I want to say this is nepotism, but his dad works in the front office. That doesn't hurt at the very least Sheldon White. So um, overall, you know, he's a known guy. I think they probably trust him pretty well and want to have him on the practice squad in case something happened and somebody had to be called up to fill a hat. He could probably fill it. All right. So, uh, you know, guys like Jamarcus Bradley and Dan Chisena and, you know, bottom end of those guys, they, they're, they're not getting many snaps at all. I mean, they get a fair amount of reps as guys rotate in. You get a lot of rotation at wide receiver. Chisena had a good downfield block on a Rodney Williams uh, catch, and he's he's got some size to him, and he's a speedster he's a, track yeah. guy at Penn State. So, I mean, you can kind of feel the speed. You know, again, he's like Olszewski, really didn't catch the ball in college because he wasn't playing a lot of football. Um, but, his calling know, the, card was a, has been on special teams anyway so far. Right, in Minnesota, he was one of their, their coverage guys. I thought he would have a chance before Boykin came back, and that kind of is going to close the door on Jacena. But he's got some speed. He might be fun to watch this uh, preseason. All right, tight ends. Uh, we already mentioned Rodney Williams back out there. Uh, I saw some of the clips of them going through, you know, hitting the blocking sled and all like that. What else you have uh, on that group? Yeah, individually, um, probably not one particular note. Darnell Washington getting his first catch at camp, which is uh, you know, good for him. You think he had another one that was contested and he couldn't come down and finish it. So it's probably it's it's still been pretty quiet overall. But I've seen a lot of involvement from the tight ends, whether it's Connor Hayward or Pat Frymuth has been pretty heavily involved in the first two days, which is not earth shattering, but we're gonna note it still uh, all the same. Zach Gentry. Uh, Williams on these boots. So just a lot of tight end involvement in this offense. And and what do you want to make of that? I mean, you know, we'll have to see, but the tight ends have been in my notes quite a bit just from being the targets of some of these passes. All right, let's move to offensive line. Tell me about the line rotations. And I believe Broderick Jones got either a snap or two or something to that degree uh, with the first teamers. Yeah, kind of a weird one there. And to be honest, I missed it. So I apologize for that. Sometimes can't move so fast that those little wrinkles that get thrown in, you know, I may not always be able to catch it, but uh, reportedly got one rep, one random kind of first team rep late in practice today. But uh, I'm sure he'll get more of that going forward. It was a tough day for the tackles overall. Dan Moore had his trouble with Alex Highsmith, uh, Spencer Anderson trouble on the right side, um, you know, trying to seal the edge. And so I thought the Pittsburgh Steelers edge rushers won the day over the tackles. All right. What about uh, the rotations all the same? Yeah, I guess aside from that uh, quirk with with Jones getting a snap in there, um, everything else to me looked the same. And and for most of the day, to be clear, Jones was second team left tackle. All right. So no, not nothing new to report at center. Same same rotation with mm-hmm. with, with that and all that. We'll start learning more about that when the pads go on, and yeah. obviously when we get into uh, get into preseason, right? Yeah, I was talking with somebody at camp today. We both agreed, like, until the pads come on, you really can't evaluate the O-line too well. Um, everyone's staying on their feet, and, you know, just not that feel of, of going 100%. So Tuesday will be the day to really evaluate the trenches. And that's probably the same on our defensive line, but any any anything to add uh, when it comes to uh, the defensive line that, that sticks out? Just seeing Keanu Benton work in some of those sub packages, which is good. He's not being just the the nose tackle. And Montrevious Adams did get first team nose tackle reps today. I did uh, catch that, I think, in either, I think it was the, the first team session after seven shots. It was Oak and Joby, Adams, Hayward, and then second team nose tackle was Benton. But we're seeing him float in some of those nickel packages as well. Uh, beyond that, I really didn't notice anything too significant. But you think we're trying to, or I, I, I have not given it much chance of Montrevious Adams is sticking around. Uh, now it's obviously still early and, and all like that, but do you think uh, uh, we're un- unfairly overlooking him? Yeah. I mean, we kind of just assume that and, and always want to be careful with just assuming that, yeah, he's probably not going to be here. Um, he's still the starter right now and Benton's going to have to play well and, and show that he deserves those snaps. Um, so you're right. It's always good to probably check ourselves and, and evaluate that. I don't want to say this guy has no chance. Um, it really depends. I think a lot on the, the development of Keanu Benton. Okay. Uh, inside linebacker. Yeah. Still not a ton to note there. It's kind of like, you know, defensive line offensive line you can't tackle you really can't fill the hole as hard as you'd like to so um you're probably not noting a ton there in terms of the the rotations those all the same with Holcomb and Roberts with the ones Robinson and Russell with the twos Kwiatkowski and Muse uh third string uh what do I have here in my notes yeah just seeing Russell I think blitz a little bit kind of move around a little bit um 
but probably nothing too concrete on the off-ball linebackers. All right, outside linebacker Herbig, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, turn. He seems to be the buzz right now at start of camp. Yeah, if you want to pick a winner of the first two days, I would say it's going to be Nick Herbig for the burst, um, winning the edge today, winning the edge yesterday, uh, batted a ball today on Mitch Trubisky. I mean, just kind of looking like a mini TJ Watt out there. And I mean that a little, obviously, uh, hyperbolic, uh, hyperbole. What do you say? Hyper, hyper, hyperbole. Hi- hyperbole. Yeah. Um, so obviously, I'm, I'm being a little facetious, but Wisconsin kid, good energy, good first step. And it is tough for those edge rushers because they really can't rush with power. You can't really be bull rushing in a situation like this. It's a lot of finesse, a lot of spin moves, a lot of, you know, dips and trying to win the edge. And so tackles can kind of sit on some of that stuff. And when you're still winning, it kind of talks about the explosiveness that you have. But I would say the edge rushers, I mean, TJ Watt, Alex Highsmith, Highsmith was given more and more all kinds of fits today. That's not unexpected. They're, you know, really good players on long-term deals. But um, Nick Herbig, yeah, doing it all. Pressure, batting a ball down. Dropping into coverage once. I think that was from, from the edge spot there. So this guy's athletic. He's laid on his feet. He's making plays. Going to really be fun to watch him during the preseason because he's going to get a lot of burn on the yeah. edge. Yeah, he's going to get he, he He probably will get the most snaps defensively of any any player this camp, I'm going to have to guess here, um, and then get a lot of burn on special teams as well. I mean, when you think about it in preseason and all, might he be the player that gets the most burn on the defensive side of football altogether? Yeah, I think so. Or, or, and then combine that with, uh, let, let's say, defensive and, and special team snaps. Might he come out of preseason, uh, uh, you know, as far as defensive players go with with the, and heck, probably the offensive players as well, too. Uh, he might he might lead the team in, in, in combined snaps. Would not surprise me one bit. If you had to bet on one guy to do that, I'd bet on Nick Herbig. All right. Uh Mark, anything I Marcus Golden, he you know, he went in a couple of battles there or, or or making a mark. I hadn't noticed that. I see the pass rush plan. There was one inside spin. Um, so I mean I kind of saw him doing a little bit of di- different stuff. He's probably a veteran who's probably just testing out moves and trying different stuff and you know, getting a lot of reps against Broderick Jones because they're both second team guys right now. So it's a good opportunity for Jones to face a, a crafty veteran as opposed to a rookie or some sort of guy just trying to hang on. So I think for Marcus Golden to go against Broderick Jones, as much as those two are, is really good for Broderick Jones and his development. Uh, TJ Swat uh, ma- ma- making appearances. Yeah. At a Swat, a uh, Kenny Pickett. It's just a classic TJ Watt where he's not going to rush. He, he reads the quick game, just reads the shoulder of the quarterback, times his jump and, you know, puts the, the football back in the quarterback's face. And so classic TJ SWAT on display today. That was uh, early in team. The, uh, the, after the seven shots, I think maybe the first play of that, that second team session, uh, a TJ SWAT moment. Uh, refresh my memory. Uh, David Perales, right side. Uh, he has been more left side. Okay. I want to say I'll double check my notes, but I want to say left side and, uh, Toby and Duke had a pressure today. So I thought all the edge guys were, were kind of winning the edge pretty consistently. Yeah, Perales ought to get some, some pretty uh, him. Him and Herbie got a log, you know, a fair amount of snaps during the preseason. I would think. Yeah, I would agree with you. Uh, let's see. You probably got a lot to talk about when you talk. I mean, uh, a lot, a lot of slots. Say that real fast. A lot of slots, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, be careful with how you pronounce Corner. all those words there. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I have five slot corners down through the first two days, and I'll try to rattle them off here. Patrick Peterson, Elijah Riley, Duke Dawson, Chandon Sullivan, and uh, Trey Norwood. And so all those guys getting work, it was Chandon Sullivan getting first-team slot reps. So Duke Dawson, first-team yesterday, Sullivan, first-team today. We'll see what tomorrow looks like. Patrick Peterson bumping inside, uh, getting Joey Porter on the field. So um, a lot of different options there uh, in terms of the slot. I don't know if any one guy necessarily stood out today, but just to kind of say they're casting a wide net. When it comes to that position, I was going to say, does it? I mean, and it's got to him. It's been a topic of ours all, all off season. There, I mean, uh, th- they're they're really trying to figure this thing out there, right? Yeah, because they have to, because they don't have a good answer. There really isn't any any clear cut plan coming in the camp. Now, my my strong feeling is at the least to try to give some clarity is that on those passing downs, Patrick Peterson will bump inside and Joey Porter will come on the field, allows Porter a chance to to play and get snaps. Of course, they want him to to play right away. And then Peterson to play inside, to be versatile, to maybe rotate and do some disguise type stuff. And so it's probably the, the best way to do that. And then I think they're, they're probably going to look for an early down kind of guy. I mentioned this yesterday of a, a rundown slot type. I think Elijah Riley would fit that well. Uh, Duke Dawson kind of has that background. But 
there is it probably will not be a true one guy full time corner in the slot the way that Mike Hilton was. It'll probably be at least two people the way it was with Arthur Millette and Cam Sutton the past two seasons. Uh do not do uh do not write Chandon Sullivan's name down in pen on the fifty three. No, I wouldn't write a lot of these guys' names down in pen. I wouldn't do that for him. I wouldn't do that for Riley, for Dawson, for Norwood. Of course, Peterson will be in pen. Um, but you know, all these guys are are fighting for the roster spot right now. And that that makes that makes the competition really worthwhile. It's a it's a real true battle. Who do you think would be the best uh, blitzer uh, hmm. out, uh, off the slot? Probably either a guy. I mean. Peterson oh, the guys that have that, the chance to make it, obviously. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, Peterson has kind of that that probably savviness to time it up, but I think Riley has the size and physicality, and Dawson kind of has that background as well. So I don't know if either, I don't know if any of these guys have a real true resume for that, the way that you know Hilton did, the way that Millette did. Um, but I think just on body type and style, I would say Riley and Dawson. All right. Uh, how about some safety action, safety dance? Yeah. Well, speaking of that, I just Before saw your one time. Men without hats. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know that reference at all. Over my head. Uh, Peterson in seven on seven, it was just that seven on seven, but got a rep as like a deep half safety and, and rotating out. And so I uh, want to note that they, I think they truly want to use and I, I'll, I'll eat some crow. I think I was kind of wrong about this when they signed Peterson. I thought if he could just kind of some basic rotations, I think they truly want to use Patrick Peterson like a Cam Sutton and really move him around as much as possible. At least they're attempting to explore that and see what Peterson can do with it. So um, we're going to see that and probably build on that throughout the summer. Um, beyond that, some more rotations with guys like Keanu Neal. Casey had a good breakup on Frymuth and seven shots. Um, I don't know if anything else really stuck out in a big way beyond that. I'd tell you when you rewind in your head all the way back to the coaches uh, breakfast back in, when was that March or whatnot? And Tomlin talking about, you know, possibility of moving him around and, you know, Peterson, I think has done a good job of, of being coy as a veteran uh, would be in uh, like him when asked, what are you going to do as this off season has progressed? I'm, I'm at first, I wasn't so sure that he would move around you know, as, as much, but I, I, I'm starting to get the feel now that, that you're right, that, you know, it, it, it feels like it might be trending that way. And, and, you know, even a, an occasional rotation back into safety to confuse some people, because look, if you don't know where, uh, Minka's going to be, <laughs> that's, that's prime, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, as much as you can have some of that rotation go into, uh, effect and just, you know, confuse opposing, especially if it, if it comes right at snap or, 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 or post snap kind of thing, uh, you can maybe trick some, some young, some younger quarterbacks or inexperienced quarterbacks into making some mistakes here with that. Sure. And, and Pittsburgh needs that. They need somebody who can rotate so Mika can rotate. Mika can't rotate by himself. You know, he can't do both. If he's going to move, somebody has to move with him. And and so it takes two to tango. Otherwise, Mika's going to have to become a more static player, and that's not good for him or good for this team. So, again, I mean, they're going to explore it with Peterson. You know, how well does it work? We'll have to see. I think they're confident it will, but they're certainly going to test it out uh, this, this time. And this is the time of year to test those things out. Okay, Peterson kind of a new thing in your career moving around. How well can you do with it? What can we do uh, with you? How can we move you around? What works for you? What works best for the scheme and the system? So this is the time to kind of toy around with those things. And Pittsburgh certainly is. All right. Uh, anything else to add about uh, safety? No, I do want to make a note on a, a corner again with Madre Harper had a good breakup along the sideline and Corey Trice's size is evident, probably got a little too grabby on one downfield throw, but uh, these corners made are big. All these guys, it's not even just, you know, Porter, uh, but it's, it's, you know, Levi Wallace has some size. Trice is obviously big. Harper's got some real good size as well. So um, Pittsburgh very much building a type at corner and it's not me. It's not guys who look, 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 look like me at cornerback. It's guys who look like Joey Porter Jr. and Corey Trice. Um, even the backups on this team are, are pretty big dudes. Yeah, I noticed uh, 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 Pickens sat Porter down, but that looked like it was a little bit too far down the field, you know, uh, there. And I, I understand Mike Tomlin kind of had some, I guess, some fun with it, saying, you know, he sat your ass down or something like that. And, but uh, Mike Tomlin didn't want to talk about that after practice. <laughs> I'm not uh, shocked by that. Uh, saying, you know, that, you know, some of that stuff, you know, does, doesn't need to be uh, discussed in so many words. I think he said there. So uh, I, I think that's going to be fun to watch those two battle the rest of camp. Right. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, it's the iron, sharp, sharp and iron kind of mentality um, that happened in past years and when AB was around, all the corners that he would go against. And yeah, I think, you know, I, I, I regrettably probably won't get to watch it much on Tuesday, but that uh, when the pads come on, when they break out in their um, competition period, the first thing they do after seven shots is backs on backers, but also wide receiver DB 1v1. And I always watch backs on backers because that's kind of, to me, the marquee event. It only happens twice during camp that first day of pads and Friday night lights. And so you feel like you kind of have to watch that, but I can't wait to hear about, and maybe, you know, maybe Tim will take some photos of Pickens and Porter because I'm betting that those two will match up a couple times in that, in that session. All right. So Porter overall, those things will be acclimating just fine then, right? <laughs> yeah. And he, he's a worker, Dave. He's a worker B. I mean, first one down uh, today, second one down yesterday, catching passes, jugs machine. Um, this guy's really, you know, putting in time and it's a small thing and all these guys work hard. I don't want to discredit that, but uh, Porter's really, you know, he's not coming in like a second round pick. He's coming in with a big old chip on his shoulder. He talked about for being a second round pick and not being a first round pick. This guy's working pretty hard. All right. Specialist. Uh, let's see what happened today. No punts. Uh, Killer Brew continues to be the personal protector. BT Potter's got a bigger, le- bigger leg than I thought. Hit from 58. It was not in the actual special team session. Those were generally shorter kicks today, but Early on, it was an actual hold by Braden Man. It was early in practice, and uh, Potter put it just over the crossbar from uh, 58 yards out. So a little bit of a leg there with uh, with BT Potter. I thought his range was kind of maxed out in college of around 55 yards, but uh, to see a 58-yarder, uh, nice job by him. All right. Uh, why don't you explain why you scored seven shots the way you did? Because everybody <laughs> takes <laughs> every, everybody takes issue with why is Alex every uh, why is Alex scores different than everybody else's? For for one yeah. thing, you're further away. Yeah, it can be hard to see some of those things. So I mean, people can can read about different uh, you know scorings overall, but for me. Anytime a quarterback runs the ball in, uh, I give that as a win to the defense. Because what can a defense do if the quarterback's running? You can't touch him, obviously. And so if you're if you're making a quarterback scramble, to me that's a coverage play, and that's a, that's a win for the defense. So uh, whenever those situations happen, and people don't like it, but that's how I score it. That's how I'll continue to score it. Uh, if the quarterback tucks and runs, it's a point for the defense. Okay, and the reason, and 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 uh, if you were to take out the the one reset or whatnot, because you said technically there's eight, but but Tomlin uh, wanted to see something ran ran again because of, what was it a bobbled snap or something or yeah, I think maybe a false start. There was a low snap, and Trubisky had to pick it up, and it kind of was con- just a, a busted looking play. All right, uh, take that one out there, out, out of out of there. How would it have been scored? But include it, it, the Trubisky touchdown in, in whose favor, the offense? Or the uh, who, whoever you think, okay, the way if you I take, scored. Yeah, if in I take other, that in other out. words, that would be a defensive win in, in yeah. your mind. Then I have 4-3 defense winning this one. Okay, so that would be uh, one off, right? Because don't didn't most of them have it 5-2 or something? I honestly don't even know what anyone else had, to be honest with okay. you. Um, I, I just don't have time to check. But. Right. I, maybe I maybe I missed something. I mean, I have it. My my notes are all written out there, so people can go back and sure. and check it. But uh, that's what I came up with. All right. Uh, any any global forty thousand foot uh, feet kind of observations? Two two practices in. Anything yeah, just really I'm trying to out? think about that. I mean, just I think Herbig. I go back to Herbig, and I'm just seeing the traits. I'm just trying to see traits right now, especially with these new guys and new, new new faces to me. And you're seeing the traits, the burst, the athleticism with Herbig, Allen Robinson, you know, being that trusty underneath kind of guy. Um, and that's encouraging. I think it's been a pretty clean two days of practice um, in terms of not a ton of drops and penalties. There was that one weird moment in seven shots we just referenced. But overall, I think for kind of a new group and, you know, obviously first two days of camp, everyone getting acclimated. Um, it's not been sloppy, and, and that's always a good sign. All right. And I think a plus, obviously, is is outside of the heat-related stuff. Uh, per, per, pretty clean there. We don't know exactly what's going on with Minka, but once again, the fact that he didn't start on PUP, whatever he's dealing with is pro- probably minor there. So hopefully they get some of these heat-related guys uh, back uh, going after it again on Saturday. So we got, what, Saturday and Sunday? Uh, and then, uh, what was it, Tuesday is, 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 is pads? Right. Saturday, Sunday practice will not be in pads. That's NFL mandated day off Monday. Pads come on Tuesday and the fun starts then. All right. Anything in particular that you're already kind of looking ahead to tomorrow says I want to make sure I keep eyes on. 
Well, I guess some Broderick Jones to see if the first team rep was just a, a, a you know, here you go kind of rep or something more to it. So I'll keep an eye on that. Of course, the guys who left for the heat stuff, we'll see what their availability is like. Um, and yeah, I'll have to think about what else to think about. But uh, those are top two things off the of top of my head. All right. I think you're writing something about Allen Robinson for the morning. Yeah. Or late tonight, whenever I get it done. Um, you know, a lot of things we're talking about now and I have to kind of go back through my notes and just, you know, put all those, those things together, but this guy's making a lot of great underneath grabs and that's kind of what his job is to be uh, on the field and be a leader off of it. I think he's doing both those things pretty well uh, early on. All right. I certainly appreciate you being, uh, the eyes. And like I said, I, I learned a lot from you throughout this process here and you'll be back out there on Saturday at St. Vincent college in, uh, at, in La Trobe. And we will be back, uh, Saturday night to wrap up the practice, uh, with another special edition of the terrible podcast. So, uh, with that, you can follow me on Twitter at Cedars Depot, follow Alex at Alex underscore Gazora, follow the show at terrible podcast, email the show, the terrible podcast, at gmail.com uh you know how to donate you know where the ad free button is up top there in the uh upper right navigational bar there so uh until saturday night thanks for listening to the terrible podcast this special edition of the terrible podcast pittsburgh Steelers training camp 2023 good night